friends, and welcome to my new subscribers! I thought I would celebrate having so many new viewers and my anniversary by making potentially the least popular of all booktube videos a booktube video encouraging you to learn about math. It's the start of the summer, and it's a time when a lot of people take on challenges, uh, new pro learning projects they want to do, or goals they have for themselves, be it physically exercising, or learning something new, and something that I have been working on learning the last few years has been math. I married a mathematician three years ago today, and one of the great joys of being married to him is that I have learned so much more about the world that I would not have known if I hadn't had him part of my life. So, today I'm going to give four book recommendations for those of you who are might possibly be interested in dipping a toe into the area of mathematics, or you think people who study math are smart and sort of jealous that you're not smart in that way, you can be. It's not, it doesn't need to be terrible. It can be really great. And then the whole world will make a little more sense. I promise. Okay. The first book is called A Mind for Numbers, and it's by Barbara Oakley. She is not an expert in mathematics necessarily, but she is an expert on many things and learned to study math as an adult. Her course Learning How to Learn on the online Coursera website is a massive online course where you can learn about learning theory and how best to approach a new topic or, or just learn something that's difficult for you. The course itself is phenomenal, and her book, A Mind for Numbers, is the textbook for that course and by itself is a wonderful guidebook to how to study effectively. I recommend it for anyone who is entering college, is in college, is going into a new course of study, or wants to learn something on your own. It has dramatically changed the way I went about trying to study things that had always been difficult for me in the past, including learning Dutch. It's really, really good. The next book is on the New York Times bestseller list and that is how Not to Be Wrong. Um, this is written by a maths professor, and he is one of the most engaging and funny people I have ever read. So you may have seen an article of his on Slate magazine for why handsome men are such jerks, which is really interesting and fun, and if you like it, you will certainly like the rest of his book. Even his chapter titles are hilarious. They are things like what to expect when you're expecting to win the lottery, or does Facebook know you're a terrorist, or are you there, God, it's me, Bayesian inference, and how much is that in dead Americans? In a similar vein, the book How to Bake Pie is a book that explores the connection between math and cooking. When I was taking calculus, I was thinking about the fact that even though a lot of things in math are not like prerequisites. You don't have to have learned algebra to have learned geometry. Like you can learn those in sort of either order, but but it helps either way to have learned the other just because you sort of know what's going on. You know how to use numbers and make operations turn out. And the thing that it reminded me of was cooking. If you don't know anything about cooking and the recipe calls for diced onions, you might not know how one dices onions, or is diced onions a, like ingredient you purchase at the store. Uh, one of my friends in grad school started learning to cook and made a blog about him making sort of gourmet recipes from Shakespeare's cookbook. It is hilarious. Such a funny blog. I'll link down below to one of the best blog posts from it, where he ends up spending like six hours trying to make beet puff pastry tarts. Uh, that go terribly, and, and it's it's great. Um, How to Bake Pie talks about math, but also is full of baking recipes, so if that appeals to you, it's another good book. The last one I want to talk about is uh, a bit of a tome. It's Gödel Escher Bach by Douglas Hofstadter. It won the Pulitzer Prize, and it is mind-blowingly brilliant. It's almost more of a philosophy book than it is a math book. It's a comparison between the German mathematician Gödel, um, the Dutch designer and artist uh, Escher, and J.S. Bach, the like, composer, and talking about the ways in which patterns and repetitions complete themselves inside of themselves. Each chapter has an introduction that is set in the form of a dialogue between 
Achilles and a tortoise, and um, they express the the content of the like sort of more formal nonfiction chapter in sort of an imaginative way first. In one of them, they were talking about what you would do if you wrote a book and you wanted the ending to be a surprise, but you didn't want the reader to know when the ending was coming. It's very hard to hide where the ending is because the pages run out, right? You'd have to have like extra pages that were like just there for show, but you couldn't leave them blank, right? Like then if you're just flipping through, you'd be like, oh look, there's like a hundred extra blank pages at the end. You had to fill them with something, but you couldn't just fill them with like random words because if your eye like happened upon them and you saw like marshmallow, marshmallow, watermelon, like you'd be like, what is this nonsense? Um, and it would attract your attention and you'd be like, okay, I have to figure out where, what's, where does the nonsense begin? Um, so it'd have to be more subtle than that. You'd have to have some sort of like clue or like, and as they're like having this conversation, you find that there are like many sort of symbols popping up, like the conversation itself may have already finished and they're just saying words to keep filling. And it was, oh my goodness, this book, years after I read it for a course in undergrad, I would be lying awake at night thinking about how brilliant it was thinking about some of the concepts and questions it still left open. So, I love it. I definitely recommend it. If it sounds good, do you trust your instincts and give it a shot? I think that's all I was going to say. If there's a thing that you've been wanting to learn but you're kind of scared of or intimidated by, I just want to encourage you to do it, whether it's math or something else. And I'd love to hear if you have learning projects you're excited for for this summer. Yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> um, that's all for now. Bye, guys.